Colossians chapter number 3. Everybody get your seat there and get settled now. Uh, no use me and you grown-ups moving now. Unless it's an emergency. Colossians chapter number 3. And I'm going to read you a verse here, this little short epistle of Colossians, chapter 3, verse number 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. Here the Lord tells us, admonishes us, I guess flat out commands us that we should be thankful. I'd say that scripture is disobeyed more than about any other scripture by most Christians. How many of us just this week have griped and complained and felt sorry for ourselves and thought, oh how pitiful we really are. The Bible says, be ye Thankful. Thankful. Let's think about it this morning. There are many, many, many things for which we should be thankful. Not just at Thanksgiving. 2 Timothy 3, 2 said one of the signs of the last days was that people would be unthankful. Have you noticed this? This is human nature. The more we have, the less thankful we become. The most thankful people in the world, poor people. Seem like the more God blesses us, the more we expect Him to bless us. And get mad if He don't. We're something else. You know, that human nature is something else. Unthankful. Seems as if people, more people have to be thankful for, the less thankful they are. One of the surest proofs of the depravity of the human heart is that we're so thankful. Somebody said one time that there's in a church service about this time of year, and, uh, they was giving money. People was giving money. And somebody said, well, uh, we have a check here for $200. And we want to give this in memorial to our son who was killed in the, in the war, in the armed services. And they said, well, that's wonderful. How, how wonderful that is. I said, well, we, we present this check for $200 as a memorial to our son who was killed in the, in the service. Another lady said, we'd like to give him a, a check for $200 too in honor of our son. And the man turned around and said, what are you talking about? Our son wasn't killed in the service. And she said, I'd like to give one because he wasn't killed. And he was brought home safely. And it's too bad that, that uh, we're not thankful for what God does for us on a, just a normal, normal basis. It's too bad, isn't it? They said that uh, uh, the, they tried to bottle up prayers and catch prayers as they went to heaven. And these angels would catch one kind of prayer and another kind of prayer. And some of these angels were bottling up asking prayers, and other angels were bottling up thanking prayers. And this one angel's bottle was just filled and running over, falling out on the floor of the things that people asked for. And there's just a few in this other bottle, the things that people were thankful for. Boy, what a sin. What a sin. Bible says, be ye thankful. You want to get yourself into a good mood right quick? Just sit down and just start listing all the good things that God's done for you. I got to think about just this morning, just feeling good enough. I don't know if you've ever been to the hospital or had any pain at all, but just the fact of feeling good enough to get up and come to church is something we just can't thank Him enough. We just can't praise Him enough. You say, oh, preacher, come on now, get off it. No, no, listen, good health is not something to be taken for granted, man. But these people all over this country in the hospital that would give every dime they own to feel as good as you feel right now. We can see. I can see you. I can hear. I can think. I can jump. I can laugh. I can smile. God has been good to us. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Isn't that something? You say, well, well I ain't got much. You, like that old woman said, she didn't have but two teeth, but she thanked God they met. 
Well, at least they hit each other when she closed her mouth. What a blessing, brother. Uh, I mean, there's always something to be thankful for. Isn't that right? There's always something to be thankful for. Instead of fussing about your bills, like I said a while ago, thank God you ain't the one that you, that you owe the money to. It's, uh, uh, thank God. When, when somebody come in one morning and, uh, they said, my goodness, what an ugly day. It's rainy and foggy and everything. We just don't have nothing to be thankful for today. And the preacher said, oh yes we do. Thank God it's not always like this. Thank God there are sunshiny days. Thank God there is beautiful weather. Thank God there is blue sky. Thank you say, well, I've had a lot of trouble in my life. Well, so have I. I've had a little bit. But I tell you, we ought to thank God for the good days that we have. This right here is a good day. This is a great day. Amen? You haven't had to hear no bad news. Nobody in the family has been killed. Uh, I mean, it's just it's a great day. We ought to be thankful this morning. One thing I believe brings revival on God's people is when we just start thanking God. i tell you what we could do this morning. I could quit preaching right now. We could all crowd around this altar, get down on our knees, and forget anybody else is here, and just start saying, God, I thank you for my kids. God, they've been good. God, you've Bless my kid. God, I thank you for my church. God, I thank you for my health. God, I thank you for my family. God, I thank you for my mama, for my daddy. God, I thank you for my clothes. God, I thank you for the house I live in. God, I just thank you. I just thank you. You think about how bad it could be today. But it'll make you thankful. Bible said, be ye thankful. Amen. You want God to bless you? Start thanking Him for what He has done for you. Quit griping about what you ain't got and thank God for what you have. Let me, let me tell you a couple of things this morning. We ought to be thankful for the, just the privilege of living here in America. I don't know how much you've been out of America. I've been out a few times and that's a few too many. And every time I leave America, I can't wait to get back. I know they put on the on these Learning Channel, Discovery Channel, all this stuff about all these other countries, how beautiful they are. And they show you the Eiffel Tower and Paris and the bridge and, and, and rivers going through downtown and stuff. And you think, oh, what a romantic place. I'd love to be there. Don't let them fool you with them commercials. Don't let them fool you. I tell you what, uh, when I was in Haiti the first time, I mean, this was a long time ago. It was 20 years ago nearly. And I was in Haiti. We was down there and a Snickers bar cost near about a dollar. It'd probably be five dollars now, three or four or five dollars for a Snickers bar. And five dollars ain't as easy to come by there as it is here. And people are living, that little kid's starving to death. A few people are real rich, everybody else poor. Germany, ain't nothing to brag about. Uh, Ireland, Canada, Mexico, you sure don't want to go there. They pick out a few places that are, are uh, exotic, like, you know, beaches and sand, and they think, wow, wouldn't you like to go there? It would be a nice place to visit, maybe, but you sure wouldn't want to live there. You ought to thank God that you live in the old United States of America. Let me tell you just a minute about how it all began. You young people listen to me, because if you go to a public school, you'll never hear what I'm getting ready to tell you. How it all started, there was a group in Scrooby, England, prepared to come to their new home where they might preach, pray, and preserve their culture and raise their children to live for God. From Leyden, Holland, they boarded the 60-ton speed whale, a ship. They got on the speed whale. They knew they were pilgrims. And here's what they brought with them. They brought a printing press, 200 books, and the Bible to be the textbook for the children at school. I said uh, they brought the Bible to be the textbook for the children at school. The Bible was the original textbook in the public schools in America. We hadn't changed. They're the ones that have changed. We wouldn't have to have Christian schools at all if the public schools done their job and taught the kids the truth about the Word of God. Say amen. amen. That's right. Oh, it's not their job to... It was to begin with. That's how they got started. The Speedwell and the Mayflower sailed on August the 5th, 1620. After 300 miles, the Speedwell was declared unseaworthy and had to turn around and go back. All the passengers that wanted to go had to get on board the Mayflower. They all wound up on the Mayflower and they set sail for this country. September the 6th, 1620, the Mayflower sailed with 102 passengers. Twenty people dropped out. Big mistake. 
And that ought to tell you something. When things get hard for you in your Christian life, you don't drop out, you keep on going. Because that's when the blessing's waiting on the head of you up there. They sailed. They had seven weeks behind them and 60 more days to go. They were eating the food supply. They could not go back. They couldn't make it. They didn't have enough food. They had sold their land and their houses. They had nothing behind them. And they sailed on the Mayflower. Some of the sailors that run the ship begin to mock and laugh at the Christian for praying. Listen to me. The leader of the mockers was suddenly taken with a strange fever and died in a few hours. Nobody else mocked them anymore. His was the first body to go overboard. Wonder why they don't tell you that in school now. Wonder why they don't tell you that the pilgrims was down on the Mayflower praying and praising and thanking God and the leader of the crew mocked and made fun of them and a few hours his body was in the, uh, the ocean. He is dead. And nobody mocked those Christians anymore. Nobody made fun of them anymore. The mocking ceased. Finally on November the 9th at 7 a.m. there was a shout went up from the crow's nest. Land ho! And when they did that, shouts rang out from all over the ship. Tears began to fall down their cheeks. And people fell to their knees and began to thank God. They began to pray and praise the Lord. Somebody read, the elder Brewster, they said, stood up and read, or, or that folks stood up and read the, tw- the 100th Psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of His pasture. And the shouts of praise rang up from the Mayflower. Thank God we made it to our new home. They would soon be in their new home. Come out from the main deck and the shouts came out. They knelt on the shores of Cape Cod. Imagine, no houses, just wilderness. It was wintertime here. The ocean was behind them. What could sustain these pilgrims? Not but the Spirit of God and His grace. You know what they did? Strangely, they found a piece of land already cleared at Plymouth Rock as if an unseen hand had wiped it out and made it cleared for them. Trees were cut. Everything was gone. Cleared out for a colony to begin right there waiting on them. They couldn't figure it out. They found out later that a hostile tribe of Indians had lived on that clearing and a strange plague had mysteriously destroyed the whole clan. And word got out among the other Indian tribes that the Great Spirit was angry with that tribe and wiped it out. And so none of these tribes would go there. They were afraid of that property. And they said it looked like a mighty hand just come and cleaned out a spot for those pilgrims. to live. God's hand was on that little group of people. And God's hand had prepared America. And I'll tell you this morning, I believe this. You may think this often me say that, but it's true. And you hear a lot of preachers say the same thing. The hand of God was as much as them people coming in America and found in this nation, almost as it was the children of Israel getting to the promised land back there in the Old Testament. It is evident from history that the hand of God... Why did God wait until uh, the last century or last few centuries for them to discover and populate America? God's hand was on that group. You know what they did? They settled that strange little place that was cleared out for them. They settled it. They began to powerfully and profitably preach the Word of God. People sat on log benches... They met an Indian that learned to speak English. And so on October the 16th, October in 1621, the governor declared a day of public thanksgiving. The governor stood up almost a year later in October and he said, I tell you what we're going to do. We are going to declare as our anniversary a day of thanksgiving. And we're going to eat and, and we're going to have fa- fellowship and we're going to thank God. Originally, that's what thanksgiving was. It wasn't just a day to play football or basketball. It was a day in which we got down on our knees and thanked God for what He had done for us. They thanked God. They brought out turnips and cabbages and carrots 
and deer meat and turkey. Them men would go out into them woods and kill them big old deer and bring them back in. The ladies would be a bawling fixing that cabbage and, and carrots and green beans and, and uh, I mean, oh, I don't know, mashed potatoes. And they went to the store and bought some hogging dice and, and they fixed it in there. But it, I mean, we pushed the cabbage aside and eat the meat and, and the ice cream. And buddy, I'll tell you what, they thank God. They thank God. They weren't like this modern day bunch of American brats who don't even, uh, won't even stand at a ball game and salute our flag. They weren't like this modern day brats who would spit on the American flag and, and sew the flag on the rear ends of their blue jeans and, and live wicked and disrespect our nation and our Bible and our country and our God. They weren't like these bunch of traitors that we have now who have no respect for what God has done for us here in America. They bow on their knees and they thank God. You hear me this morning? Everybody in here, instead of griping about your wife or husband, you ought to be on your knees thanking God for your wife or your husband and your kids. And you say, well, he ain't much. He's probably better than you deserve. You ought to thank God for what he's done for you. Thank God for what He's done. Thank God for what He's done. Thank God for what He's done. God's been good to us. Hey, if there's anybody in McDowell County, oh, be shouting at me this morning. It's us. Thank God for our church. Thank God for our school. Thank God for our boys and girls. Thank Him. And be thankful for what the Bible said this morning. I'll be like that one hippie I read about. And he's out here like, cool man, I was out the man like, hey baby, on out. And he told his girlfriend, his hippie girlfriend, he met her uptown, he said, he said, I tell you what, you go this way, I go that way, we'll meet after a while. He said, I'll go down there and pick up my unemployment check, and then I'll go to the university to check and see if I'm gonna get my grant that they're gonna give me. And then I go by the grocery store and pick up my food stamps, and then I think, you go on over there and go to the free clinic and get your test made, make sure you ain't pregnant, or got some disease or something, and be sure and get my glasses, my free glasses, while you're at the health center and go by the welfare and get a check and see if you can get it increased and then I'll meet you down there at the federal building at 5 o'clock this evening where we're going to have a protest against the rotten establishment. Amen. That's our generation, brother. That's our generation. Oh, by the way, have I preached on this verse lately? This book said, if a man won't work, that man should not eat. That goes for you job people that's been trying to find a job for five years. Amen? Hey, well, that book said you don't work, you don't eat. We're living in there. They'll go down there and lay down. In, I told you in California, I've seen this boy and girl, healthy as I am. They're sitting there like this, have a little sign up like this. It said, please put in a dollar to help us buy a beer or buy a joint or, or give us one, something like that. And I mean, they're as healthy as anybody, and they think we're going over and drop money in there for them to go buy them a joint? Yeah. I mean, you're dreaming, man. Hey, hey, I, I tell you what, brother, we live to see the day in America where people think you owe them something just cause they live here. And listen, the government can't give us what it first don't take from us. We support the government. We pay their salary. They can't just keep giving out and giving out and giving out and giving out. We ought to thank God for the change just to live in America. I love America. I know America's backslid. I know America has a lot of things wrong with it this morning. I'll tell you what, buddy, I sort of don't want to live in no other country. Amen. And if you do, we'll help take up an offering and get buy you a one-way ticket there. That's where Ted Turner and his husky wife ought to live. I mean, let them go to Bulgaria or somewhere like that. If America's so terrible, why do they want to live here? Thank God for our nation. Thank God for the red, white, and blue. Thank God for the Statue of Liberty. Thank God for our Constitution. Thank God that we still have the liberty to preach the Word of God and go to church and honor God. Thank God for free enterprise. And you can make a living and buy your house and buy your own property and live on it. Thank God for America this morning. And then I want to say this morning, we ought to thank God that God give us a chance to be saved and go to heaven. Tell you something, you ain't doing God no big favor by coming in here today. We ought to be thanking God we've got a chance to be saved and go to heaven. Instead of griping about how, you know what I hear these days everywhere I go? Well, the church is too strict. The preachers, too, preachers on everything. Everything's a sin. The Bible, how come we can't have no fun? Everything, well, we got the wrong attitude. We ought to be thanking God He even made it possible that we could be saved. You young people in of ground, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this. You know what your problem is? you got your eyes on that world so much that you're getting your eyes off how good God's been to you. 
Amen. A chance to be saved. Thank God we're not in a drug rehab. Thank God we're not out on a cold street somewhere. Thank God, brother. I heard about this fellow who was an employer, and every year he'd give all his employees turkey at Christmas time. And they said one year he got tired of doing it. He said one year he sent out a hundred and seventy five turkeys. And two people came back and thanked him. Out of a hundred and seventy five. And he got mad and he said, I'll never do it again. I'm never going out of my way no more to be thankful or show, show anybody any good. As that, that's unthankful as people are. And what happens is you just keep taking and taking and taking. And for, first thing you know, you start expecting. God owes me this. God owes me that. The church owes me this. Uh, the government owes me this. And what can anybody do for me? Me, 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 me. When we ought to be just down on our face thanking God for a chance to be saved. I remember one time I was out there fixing, working on the parking lot. We had this big fire burning. And that fire got hot. And I was about as far as from here, the piano for, from it. And it started burning my face. And you know, sometimes I just walk up just as close as I could and feel it. And it start burning your face like that. And boy, you start, I, every time I get around a fire like that, I can imagine what it would be like to be in that fire. And buddy, I straighten up right quick. I said, God, I ain't got nothing to gripe about. God, if you've never done nothing for me, but save me from my fire, you've done more than I'll ever deserve. Amen. Amen. Thank God that night, as an 18-year-old at Nebo Baptist Church, when I come before God, He saved me. The Lord changed me. There ain't nobody can change me like Jesus Christ did. I mean, y'all know me. You ain't going to change me. I can't change myself. But God did. God did. God did. God did. I, when I met Him, I met somebody like I'd never met before. When I, when I met Him, I changed overnight. Didn't even try. He changed me. Thank God we've got a lot to be thankful for. Be saved and go to heaven. When I was out in Los Angeles a few weeks ago, what those people want, they want heaven. They want heaven. Heaven on earth, that's what they want. And they get just as close as they can get. Beautiful mansion, water squirting up, limousine, Bentley, Mercedes, Rolls Royce. And they got snap their fingers, get anything they want. But that ain't heaven. <laughs> That ain't heaven. You got bugs. You got people trying to kill you. Have put locks on your doors. People trying to steal your money. You, your car tires up. You get old, wrinkle up and die. Look what me and you got. We're going to live in a mansion one of these days that make built more house look like outside toilet, man. I mean, we're going, I mean, we're going to live in a place one of these days where we're walking on gold. We're going to live in a place where you're totally satisfied all the time. And never unhappy. And you can eat all you want. You know what? I know what some of you are going to do. I know what some of you are going to do. You say, but I'm not going to eat nothing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I'm really going to eat a big dinner. Oh, I bet you do eat something Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I don't know where I'm going to, where I'm going to eat Thanksgiving dinner, but I'm hint, hint. But, uh, but I tell you what. No, I'm not him. But I tell you what, I done had it twice in the last week. I think at least once. Somebody, we had it down in Florida, and I had it somewhere the other night. But anyway, uh, I don't know what you're gonna be eating on Thanksgiving Day. But boy, before you sit down there and you look at that food spread out there, and that turkey, the corn, the green bean, peas, carrots, whatever. Rolls, butter. You better remember a couple things. Pepsi. You can only eat so much. You know what? Isn't that an awful feeling when you got a big meal like that and you just eat and then you're about to die and you think, oh, all this food's sitting here and I can't eat no more. Have you ever done that? Man, don't you wish you could just store it up and store it up? It lasts you for about a week. And you sit there and you can't eat no more. And you get so full you're about to die. Somebody said, what's glutton, preacher? The definition of glutton is when you throw up. If you don't throw up, you're all right. <laughs> That's right, really. If you throw up, you've overdid it. I tell you what's bad when you can feel it right here, man. You can feel it right here. And you, and you, it's like old Billy Kelly said, uh, he said, uh, he said, he fed him big meal one time and he eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And he said, uh, preacher, he said, I'm full up to my neck. And the woman said, well, I had some chocolate pie here. And he said, that's what I saved my neck for. 
That's right. That's right. I mean, when you pull up to here, God's been good to us, hasn't He? Amen. Buddy, you think about that marriage supper of the Lamb, man. Think about in heaven. You can eat all you want and never get too full. Won't that be cool? I mean, think about that. They can just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and just grab something, grab this. We're going to have ice cream like big bathtubs full of it. I mean, brother, and, and cake and pie. I love it, man. I love that stuff. I love chocolate cake and lemon pie and red velvet and all that. You say, we don't have stuff like that. Buddy, you don't know what God might have up there. We're going to have a physical body. We're not a ghost that you can, like fog and stick in. We're going to have a body and we're going to eat. And brother, look, the Lord they ate with their, with their resurrected bodies. And me and you eat when we sat down in heaven and thank God for that chance to be saved and go to that supper up there where we're really going to have one one of these days. You see, Thanksgiving dinner is just a type of that dinner we're going to have up there one of these days. I'm telling you, buddy, we're going to put it away. Put it away. I don't know, what, I don't know how it's going to work. Maybe it just... I don't know. But God will fix it where you can just eat all you want and never get full. Here in America, you've got many chances to be saved. You have Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. You meet people in other countries that have never even heard a clear presentation of the gospel. How thankful you ought to be to live in America and have a chance to be saved. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Now, when our heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, now it's still early, so I'm going to have a little imitation this morning, take a few, a little bit longer than normal. So we're not in no hurry now. We're going to take just a few minutes, and I'm going to ask you, don't you think you'd be a little bit better off to start thanking God for how He's blessed you instead of griping all the time? We've already got a lot of people come this altar this morning. We ought to just crowd in this altar this morning and just say, Thank God He's been good to me. Thank God He's been good to me. God's been good to me. God's been good to me. I tell you, I'm not I'm not I'm not everything I should be or could be, but God sure has been good to me. Amen. 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 Thank God. Lord, you've been good to us this morning. We praise you for it. God, You've been good to us. Lord, I just want to thank You for every time I've ever got to walk in these doors. I thank You for every blessing down through the years and the souls we've seen saved and the many times we've had to shout in the camp. And the Spirit of God's flowed through this place. Thank You, Lord, that You let me see it, be a part of it. Thank You, Lord, that I got to be a part and just observe and watch You work in the hearts of people. Thank You, Lord, for the Bible. I thank You, Lord. We can carry it with us and study it. Oh, God, forgive us right now. I'm taking it for granted. Lord, I thank You, Father, for our children. Thank You for our school. Thank You for our Sunday school teachers. Thank You, Lord, for all You've done for us. Thank You for our wives and family and husbands and mamas and daddies. Lord, we want to thank You this morning. Help us to have a thankful spirit. Help us not to commit the sin of being unthankful. God, do a work here this morning in our hearts. Change us as we leave here today. In Jesus' name we pray and for Jesus' sake.